Well, Craig, thank you very much, George, and thank you to United Solutions for uh, having me, and thank you for everyone, your valuable time. We're going to make sure we respond and respect that. So um, I'm not going to spend a, an enormous amount of time in the PowerPoint. It's just to make sure that we that, that everyone's on the same page, that we, that we um, uh, for the people who are newer to Office Connector, that you understand what it is, and even the people who under, you know, have Office Connector or have been using it, uh, to understand the full Office Connector product suite. So I'm going to hit some of the high points of product and licensing, uh, but then I'm just going to spend time actually using the technology. And as uh, Craig said earlier, you know, there's chat. You can see it probably on your right-hand side of your screen, a little uh, bubble with a question mark, and you could chat questions there, and uh, they'll see that and uh, let me know. So appreciate that. So. Our, this Excel-based technology has been out and about since 2001, so quite a long time. Um, that is actually an outdated slide. There's actually over 2,500 customers now and, and <clears throat> tens of thousands of people using this technology, so that's fantastic. And it's used most effectively when you combine your knowledge of Excel to socialize the information. So it brings a dimension to reporting that you wouldn't get from paper or just a printout on a screen. Uh, and when you can use your, this technology in that way, it becomes most powerful. And the other dimension is it's more than just reporting. Because it, uh, there's an element of socialization, interaction, you can use this for dashboards, but you can also use this technology to maintain your database or to streamline processes like distributed cost forecasting or distributing your credit card charges, you know, uh, you know, allocating to expenses and things like that, and then not having to manually enter information into the system. And with that technology, really Sage is unparalleled in what it allows you to accomplish by, and empowering you to be able to do it by streamlining your processes. And we do this by the three products inside of the Office Center product suite, the query capability, uh, is pulling information into Excel. So if you're not familiar already with the technology, traditional technology pushes information into Excel, which of course then you have to format, what have you. This technology lives in Excel and you're pulling it in and you're doing so with a ability to precisely place information. This would allow you to do headers and footers on reports or dashboards, you know, things like this. When we talk about writing and importing, you see the direction going from Excel, where you're interacting with information, back into Sage. We do this by honoring, or while honoring, security in Sage, um, and Sage has put a lot into enabling that information to flow back. I know that existing Office Center customers often sometimes confuse write and import, because it's just information getting back in. Uh, we can just pair you with the right you know, the correct technology uh, when we talk about specific capability, functionality, and I'll demonstrate a little bit of that so that it's clearer to you. So we've got query, we've got write, we've got import. Then under query, there's an extension of query that is called OpsCenter Financials. So if you have query, you can extend its capability to do really powerful financials, and there are online presentations that are already pre-recorded you can watch just focusing on financials as well as all the training done for consultants uh, is piece and part uh, available to you even uh, out on our, our YouTube channel so there's a lot of content out there as well so when we talk about the the capabilities we have in the query we have two license types a standard license that's going to allow you to refresh reports that either other people have created or that are on the launch pad, for example. And you have a designer license that can refresh, however, can also create new or add content to existing. When I say add content to existing, I'm talking about connecting it to Sage and putting other information on your report. You could, with just a standard license, because it's Excel, add a formula, you know, or copy and paste information. So you have that capability because that's just naturally part of Excel. And then, of course, we've already hit on import and write. So I think that provides a pretty good overview. I'm going to skip over some of these slides and actually get right into uh, the, some of the technology here. Um, so what I have here 
is I've already opened up the Office Connector launch pad. Now this launch pad, you, you'll see it on the desktop. I have lots of icons here, so apologize for that. But you'll see it on your Sage desktop, uh, access to the, the launch pad and templates. Um, you can, you'll see it under your programs, under Sage. You can, you'll find the Office Connector and its launch pad there as well. Um, when you open it, I want to just make sure everybody see, understands what they're seeing here, that there's a welcome tab. And there's a lot of content here. So if you're new or experienced with the technology, this is where we'll put new information. When, we're, when we've introduced new technology, through, you know, Sage has, has introduced other developments of Office Center, we're going to put that here. You can see information on products, um, updates of the software that might be available um, if you don't have your notification for updates on, documentation, interactive knowledge base, training, you know, professional services, there's all sorts of content here. And it also discusses the, what everyone has, the starter tab. So you all have that as part of your maintenance with your Sage, your Sage Care. And there are tutorials about each of the um, reports on the launch pad um, uh, on the starter. These same ones you'll see under the report tab. The difference being is when you have a license of Office Connector, a paid license, um, especially the designer, you can uh, edit the reports that are on the report tab. You can add more content to them. So there's a lot more content here, and I'm not going to go into that because, you know, you can do that yourself. And I'm going to slide over here and just talk about these different tabs here for a moment. When we look at this report tab, these are all pre-built Excel templates that are powered by Office Connector. So uh, the ones here that just have the name are, you know, they, they identify what application they're focusing on. Although there are ones, uh, I'm going to open the first one I'm going to open is this quick view that, that span multiple um, applications. And any of these reports can pull from any table in SAGE that SAGE's ODBC driver uh, can read. ODBC stands for Open Database Connectivity. That's how we connect to the database from outside. The ones that say write. Uh, we'll have the ability not only to query, but also put information back into Sage, and in this case, using the right capability. Now, these are templates. You can actually edit this list. If, you, if there were templates here you didn't want, you could take them out of the folder that, that this points to. And if you've customized new ones and you want to put them in here, you could do that. You can also add these templates or your own templates to your Sage desktop. There's a, that capability, and I'm just planning to see there. Um, you can see right here the location that these reports are in. So right there, I could click that. I'd be right in that folder, and I could edit that list right there. Now, if I come to the Import tab, these are special templates that showcase import capability. So if they have OCQ here, that means that that's Office Center Query capability. That means that there's validation inside that template, but I'm going to be able to interact, put, you know, in this case, enter an invoice, an AR invoice, or journal entries, or um, I could do a cost forecasting, and I can put that information back into Sage, in this case, leveraging import capability. So these would be powered by Office Connector import. Financials, this, it, in order to use these financials, you must have an Office Connector query design, you know, a, a, a license, either standard or designer. And then Office Connector financials, which is a site license. And don't worry about writing this down. We will follow up with you, make sure you know what the products and prices and all that are. But to, to be able to um, play around with this, let's say you had query, because I understand people, some of you already have this technology, and you want to look at the financials. You can do that. We will now Financials is an extension of query, so we will convert your query licenses to an evaluation mode while you evaluate financials, but then we'll put it back and you'll have your licenses and you could choose perhaps to get the, uh, the financial capability. And then on the end, there are some tutorials here. Uh, there's a lot more content, as we've said, you know, on the YouTube channel. So now um, what I'm going to do here is just showcase one uh, report <clears throat> off the bat here, and that is this quick view. The reason I've chosen this to be the first one is, like I say, it pulls data from multiple areas. And it, and it really is also was one of the first templates we ever created. And, it, and uh, not a lot of people show it, but I think it's very important because it's a dashboard. 
the beginnings of dashboards started here. So um, when you open up a template with Office Connector, you're going to identify your Sage folder that you want to pull from. And you're doing this the same way you would with any Sage product. You know, you're picking it in, and you're going to, you know, the data folder, and you're going to log in. Now, I'll point out right now, because some of you may have this question, can Office Connector from a single workbook pull from multiple Sage folders? And the answer is yes, it can. Um, and also, I'll just plant another seed. People have asked, if I have my Sage reports, and I have another database, that's SQL Server database, and I want to pull data into my workbook. Could I do that? You can't do it with Office Connector, but uh, United Solutions sells another uh, that one product called Liberty Reports that you can pull from other uh, databases that are SQL Server. And, and I'll just leave that for follow-up. If you're interested, just make sure to note that with your contact at United Solutions and we can follow up with you. OK, so I'm just going to pick this folder right here. And uh, it should ask me to log in. And I, now, when I log in, you know, I just point this out as well. When you are in Sage and you're navigating screens, that's one type of security. The security that, that takes place when you access data from outside of Sage's normal menus, that is ODBC security. It's also set up in your security inside of Sage. But I can say that somebody could, you know, enter an invoice and, and, and um, have access to general ledger tables to update them. But of course, you know, inside of Sage, I might not let them run financials. Well, I can keep them out of those tables when they're outside of Sage. And you can do all of that in your Sage security. Your consultant should be able to go over any of that uh, information with you. When we look at a uh, template, and I go over this just one time, but any template you open, <coughs> either one that's on the launch pad or one that, uh, if our professional services uh, uh, is involved in creating something, we will always have an information page. Um, and on the information page, we'll tell you about the report, um, what's required, how to use it, and you know some other information, you know what it might be using here. So this is a good place to start when you're trying to understand what is it about this template, can I modify it? Take a moment, look at this, ask questions, um, and I'll come over here and look at the dashboard. And this, what, essentially, what the way this is created is a consultant imagined in their mind that they wanted to see, made perhaps for a controller, uh, a snapshot of every table that the controller might want to look at and, and the status. And use knowledge of Excel to showcase things that maybe you, your eyes should be on like unposted entries or you know really what have you. You can edit this. If you have Query Designer, you can edit this. Now when you're looking at this, you'll see things, you know, some criticism of Excel is how current is my information. You can overcome every obstacle that someone may criticize use of Excel through your processes, how you use Excel. And you'll see us doing that in the template. So we'll show you how current the data is. We'll show you the source of the data. You can protect the content so people can only change what you want them to change. You can create dashboards for other things, executive dashboards, a dashboard for operations. This is just a, simply a dashboard for perhaps a controller's perspective. We use grouping here. That's just Excel grouping where you highlight rows and then in, under your data tab you can group and then that's how you get these groupings here. So there's a lot of things about Excel that we've learned and and we can pass that along to you. So can your um, United Solutions consultants and uh, your peer group. Yeah, we have, think about it, there are thousands of Office Connector Excel experts out there and they know a lot. So this is a place to start. Now you could take this report and you could, with it, say the query capability, you could extend this report. So I want to showcase something that where when we first started with Office Connector, people would pull detail from tables, you know, and then they would use pivot tables to summarize that information. And they probably wouldn't get this level of dashboard from doing that. That's kind of the drawback of a pivot table. It's good, but not, not this good, you know. But let's say I wanted to know what detail was behind something. I want to uh, create another dimension of interaction. There is capability with Office Connector to drill into detail. 
you could say you could you know use this you know you could say this has to do with billings so what you do is you create another report inside here and you connect this cell to that report using office connector drill down and I remind you that on the launch pad there are tutorials to talk to you about using that kind of technology so that's just kind of an orientation of what you're seeing it's something that would be good for whether you're new or experienced I want to point out for the people who are newer that this in Office Connector, it's the add-ins tab is where Office Connector inform, you know, lives inside of Excel. So it's an Excel-based product. And you're going to see a number of these icons. If you hover over them, you'll see how I could change. This is how I could change the data folder. If I had multiple data folders, I could just change which one I'm looking at. You know, I can, I can uh, save this so it's just value. That, that breaks the Office Connector link. It allows me then to uh, share this report with someone who just has Excel, like a controller or a C CPA or something like that. There's there are things like preferences and how to, you could refresh all your queries right here. That this is how we would actually be designing a new query, a new report. And I'll do a quick example of that uh, or edit a query. Um, you can, if you're advanced and you know SQL. Uh, structured query language, you can you can do a lot more uh, by just clicking this button and getting into that. We have training to help you understand how to do that. Um, everything's easy when you know how, and uh, it's not and it's a lot easier to learn something like SQL when you already have are comfortable with a lot of the other things here. I won't so I won't throw all that at you right away. There are though these some of these formulas: the lookup, find, count, and sum. This, this report here uses the, uh, a lot of these things. Um, we also have an, an enormous list of functions right here. So I always put my cursor here and click this. So once upon a time, back when, say, Craig was first looking at Office Connector years and years and years and years ago, we only had a few functions. Now we have a lot more functions. So Office Connector has a lot of capability in it. So all the functions of Office Connector are here under the function selector. Now, you, these are all of them. Whether you have the right capability or import, you're going to see the function and description of its syntax here. Now, to use it, you would have to have the capability. You know, you'd have to have that particular product. And uh, this showcases the, the financial function right there. But I just wanted to kind of show you that. And, uh, and now what I'm going to do is just do a simple query um, just to show you how the querying capability works. Just make sure that that's clear. And I could do a lot of things, but what I'm just going to do is do a simple report where I'm, I'm having a range of, say, dates, and I'm pulling detail. Um, and then I'll add a column from maybe another source of information. So let's say I had, um, I wanted a from date. And this is really how this, is how this technology was originally created to work, that you could go into any Excel workbook, and you could connect it to your Sage data. That's, that's why this product was originally created. Leveraging that, you could do so much more than we ever imagined people would ever do. So if I uh, put something in here like, uh, I do not know, sample data, you know, who knows, uh, through, I'll say, now I, I might say 331, uh, you know, 20, I'll say 17. For sure, we're going to be in there somewhere. Now, there are best practices that we would teach you if you uh, were getting trained. You'll see some of that in help in the YouTube channel. A lot of the content uh, will be go over these kinds of things. But we'll teach you things like in Excel, that's cell B2. But if you come up here, you could name this as from date. You know? And now it's not only known as B2 in sheet, you know, sheet 1 of this workbook, but it also has the name from date or through date. And this is how you can create parameters, the same as you would if you were using a report. So if you know Report Designer or Crystal and you know about parameters, you can do the same thing with Excel. And uh, there you go. Now I'm going to just use this uh, the Query Wizard here and click this. And what, it, what I'm going to see is it's going to pull up a list of tables. Now we're, when we design this, the, the we tried to make a tool that would be usable by as many customers as possible. And having done uh, reporting for so many years, I've been affiliated with Sage for over, you know, Timberline before that, over 35 years. 
it taught a lot of people. Um, the challenge in report designing historically is having to pick all the tables that your report needs to come from. Not everybody can do that, but usually they can pick the starting table and evolve their report. So that's really how this wizard works out of the box. So let's say I wanted to do a, um, I'll do a job cost oriented report, right? So here I'm looking at address book entries and accounts table. But if I hit the letter J, I jump right down to job costs. And I could say JC, you know, transactions. I'm just showing you some of this stuff here. But I'm going to say I'm going to look at this table. If I wasn't sure, I could hit preview right there. I'm going to hit next. And I'm going to now be uh, shown a list of, of uh, columns. Now, it, we, as we show you tables with Office Center, we are trying to teach you your database. So we're going to show you the name of your fields, but we're also going to give you the internal name of the fields. That's really what the database calls these fields over here on the right. And we're going to show you the key of that table. And eventually, you'll learn a lot. You'd be surprised. You'll learn a lot more about how your database is connected. We also have a book called QuickAIM. It's on our website. You can get it through uh, United Solutions. And it, we've updated it to 16x, so you're, it's current. But it will show you a lot about how your database is put together and how you can use it for reporting. So I'll just plant a seed for that. But what I'm going to do is I'll just say I wanted a, a job, <coughs> extra cost code <coughs> in category, you know, and uh, then I'll come over here and say, well, I want a, you know, counting date and uh, maybe the description, a couple of these things, amount, and I could get things on here like debit and credit, vendor, but notice the vendor's name's not on this table. That's because Sage has a what's called a hierarchical database. So it doesn't this table is related to the vendor table that has the name. It's related to the employee table that has the name. So you could pull the pieces and parts you want and add to it. So you don't have to grab everything all at once. So if I grab some of these columns, <coughs> I can hit next. <clears throat> pardon me, and I could say, pardon me, um, I want to do a range of, of dates. Now, let's say I know something about my report. I only want accounting-related transactions. I could easily do that because I know Sage, right, by saying accounting date is greater than or equal to and then some date because non-accounting transactions don't have an accounting date. So I'm going to say greater than or equal to. Now, right here, I could put B2. Right? See how over here, that's where it has my from date. I thought about that. Um, if you stack your reports or if you use an admin page, then if you put this drop down, remember I named my cells. So if I come down here, I'm going to see my from date and my through date. So I could, I could put the cell address or the defined name. <clears throat> and if I, you see as I'm building this, I can build pretty complicated, involved uh, conditions here. So I'll say left than equal to, and that's going to be through date. And I can, I could edit this. I could change this to an or. I did that by double clicking here. I could add a group underneath this, like an or, like these two things or something else. Just by clicking this, I can pick an and or an or, and I can add more conditions. You know, I can delete them. So this is a graphical condition builder, um, and then this is going to be the name of the report. So I'll just say it's job cost transactions, but they're you know accounting transactions, something like that. So I can name it, and I'll hit finish, and now I have a report. Um, now in this report, at this point, <clears throat> I can start adding new columns. I could sort and subtotal. I can use Excel macros to click a button that will sort, subtotal, refresh, you know, do whatever I want. I can make this report look the way I want. I could connect a pivot table, <coughs> table to this. Pardon me, just one second. <coughs> Have a cold going on here. Um, so I could do quite a lot with it. Um, I could also, though, start to add additional information. So if I wanted on this report the cost code description, the jobs description, or if there were a vendor, I want to add the vendor's name. You know, I could just say, uh, you know, vendor name. <coughs> And I can put a formula right here and grab data, you know, data from another uh, table. And I just want to show you this real quick so that you know that you can use the functions along with this. 
And I'm just going to use one of the functions. There's lots of them, but we have limited time, so I'm just going to show you a little bit. So I'm going to say I want to look up the information off another table. To look up, you have to know the key. <clears throat> and the vendor number is the key to the vendor table. Okay, so uh, this is that list of tables that you saw earlier when I was doing my query. I'm going to come up and scan through here, and I happen to know, oh, it's accounts table vendor. That's what I want. It's right there. And, or I could type in AP space V, and it would jump right to it. So on the vendor table, what do I want? Well, it says, well, first, what are you going to use to pull the vendor? Oh, I have to know the vendor number. We're going to prompt you for the key to that field, uh, to that table. And it's right there. It's in column M, and I'm in row 6. So right here, I'm going to put in M6. Now, you'll learn, if you know Excel, you probably already know that the, probably the better way is dollar sign $M6, because um, that's a fixed column reference. And the reason you might do that is this, I'm going to build a formula, and I can actually copy or edit that formula. And if I copy it, say, to the right to, to pull other data, I, don't, I still want it pointed at the vendor. So I make a fixed a reference. So that's something that will pop up. And then what do I want off that table? I want the name. Okay. Well, the problem is that, that there's no vendor right here. See? Well, I can, this is your formula. See? This is an Excel formula. I could come right up here. That's the, the Excel's formula editor. And see how our formulas, our formulas are, are Excel formulas. When you install Office Connector, they become Excel formulas. So you can see it like this. Um, but what I'm going to do is come over here and just use Excel to say if uh, dollar sign $M6 is not equal to blank, then do the TS lookup. Otherwise, you know, blank, something like that. The point here is that you can use Excel capability along with it, right? And so if I copy this thing down, so eventually there are going to be columns that will have vendors, and when they do, I'll have the name. So I wanted to show you that, <clears throat> and I want to show you one other thing, and that is, um, one second here, my GoToMeeting panel is blocking my ability to use my, <laughs> okay, <clears throat> the, here's my date <clears throat> range over here. I could change my date range and refresh this data. So if I said I wanted to look at, you know, uh, 4-1-2015 through, uh, say, 531-2015, so I mean, hopefully there's data. It hasn't, it hasn't refreshed yet. These, the, the query is tied to these parameters, but it hasn't refreshed yet because I don't have automatic refresh turned on. So if I right-click anywhere in a query, down here I can tell it to refresh. That will refresh just this query. See how the data changed? What I did is inside the query I right-clicked and hit refresh. I could also refresh up here. That will refresh all the queries inside the workbook. Um, and as far as the parameters, when I right click here, in addition to refreshing, I can edit these parameters. You know, and that's a question that people, when they first learning Office Connector, they built a query, and they go, oh, you know, now I edited my query and it made it more flexible, but I, I want to change where my parameters are, what have you. You just click this parameters right here, and it'll pop up. This is Excel, by the way. And it says, okay, you know, the first thing is your from date, and you can change where it's located. I could also say that when through date is, is changed to refresh automatically. See here? And so if I said 1-1-2015 um, one, one, uh, through 3-31-2015, uh, hopefully there's data in there. N notice it didn't refresh when I changed the first one, but it did with the second one because I controlled that. Anyway, so that's how you use the designer query designer and, and formulas, uh, and I, we just wanted to introduce that to you. How am I doing uh, for time? I, I, there's a lot more. Obviously, once I get going, I can teach you guys this for several days, and eventually I will stop talking. But Well, uh, so you uh, questions? Um, <laughs> your time at this point is, uh, you have, uh, let's see, it's, uh, we're supposed to we haven't we set aside an hour, so you're at ten thirty four. So perfect. All right. Yep. Well, great. I think that at this point, what I'll do is I'm going to shut this down that that particular example, and I'm going to pull my this back up just to kind of point out some of the reports I recommend you folks look at. 
uh, on here, the common, you know, most popular ones. Um, periodically through the year, people will, obviously if you scan down, if you want an aging report, you're going to open that up. Um, if you are doing some kind of a general ledger auditing, you know, batch, the batch analyzer is very useful. Um, the, this template is special. It will look at who's using concurrencies at any given time. So if, you know, when you, when you buy this, it's based on concurrent use. <clears throat> so if you have, if someone's trying to refresh reports and, and it says there's no concurrencies available, who's using it? Now what's going to happen? You're, if you're new to this, you don't realize that you can actually build reports to work really any way you can imagine. That's, people will claim that. And it's true, I've seen people build some incredible things. People will not, they'll get into this and they won't release their license because they want it available when they go and they do something. So <laughs> you'll start to try to figure out, you know, are all my currencies used up? You can just order more from um, uh, United Solutions and off you go. The Account Explorer is going to show you your know, list of accounts and drill into, you know, or show you the uh, detail. And, and actually, uh, I mentioned drill in, so I think I will show that real quick um, because it utilizes that. I told you about that drill down capability. So it, that capability is, if you know Crystal, it's like a sub report. If you don't know Crystal, it's, it's kind of the opposite of a pivot table. We are presenting summarized information and then going to the detail when you need it. The benefit is it's a lot faster than any type of a pivot table would ever be. So in this situation, again, the information tab is telling you what this is. But I've got um, an, an admin tab where I can put a mask for accounts so I could, I could limit, you know, all the accounts that have certain things and different uh, prefixes, you know, what have you. Um, whatever I do, uh, no, there's nothing in this template. When you open up a workbook or, or you've got a template, you can set its preference that when you open it, it will refresh automatically. You can do that. It's on the Office Central Toolbar. Um, sometimes you don't want to. You've refreshed a big report, and you just want to work with it. And this one, you know, you're refreshing when you click this button. Now, I'm showing you this button, but I've already pointed out to you that up here in add-ins, there's this lightning bolt. So the lightning bolt refreshes the entire workbook. Remember, if you just want to refresh one query, you would right-click the query and click refresh. So what's this button doing down here? Well, for people who design reports, you may not want to trouble your, your other, you know, your users, executives, they don't, you know, you don't want to teach them how to do all this stuff. They want, you want to make everything kind of visual. So if I put a button here that says refresh, it's pretty obvious, click that and it refreshes. They don't have to remember to open up this, this uh, toolbar, you know, go up here and hit that lightning bolt. They don't have to remember anything. So if I hit refresh, I'm going to pick my folder, and I, I refresh. Now, I could save this workbook for this folder, and then I could change the folder that it's, that it's pulling on. You know, I, by coming up here, I could just click on uh, change this folder right here, open data folder, right, and I pick another folder, and I could save that. And I could have two separate workbooks generated from one, the, the, this one template and one workbook. And if I open that workbook, one workbook or another, it's defaulting to that folder. So if you have multiple folders and you want a workbook that defaults to one or the other, that's how you would do it. It's pretty, you know, it's pretty simple. Um, so if I, when I hit refresh, what it did is it populated this list of accounts. You know, these are these would be your accounts, and it's got your current activity and your current balance. Now this is a more sophisticated. You could actually build this yourself. This is actually not that hard of a workbook. If you, as you, it's hard when you don't know how, but right. But and it doesn't have to look as glitzy as this. It, it would be very simple to do a query of your accounts and then pull the current activity and current balance. Um, now I've had people say, "Well, I want to be able to roll back certain periods." The easiest way to do any of the rollback is using Office Center Financials because it will do all the math to figure out what your current at the period and current balance is as of any point in time that you have accumulated detail. It's enormously powerful capability. But you could do that just even just with Office Center Query. You know, there's just formulas where, you know, if you pick one thing, your formula is going to take current balance minus current activity, 
minus, you know, whatever, to get back in time to whatever period. But this one just shows you whatever it happens to be current. This is my current balance, current activity. Um, now, when I first started demonstrating this technology, I would actually do a report like this. And if someone says, you know, well, what made up of that number? You know, what's in that number? What I would do is I'd say, well, what we would do is we'll come here and we'll build a query. Now, it wouldn't look this great if I was building it from scratch. I would have put in, you know, an account and a from and a through. I would have put in some parameters, just like I did earlier. And I, did, I would then would have done a query that as those parameters change, the results pull. Well, notice this is blank. That's because no, no parameters have been passed here yet. So that's what drill down does, is if, you, if I click this, it passes parameters to my other report and refreshes it. That's all it does. But it's very useful. <laughs> so you don't have to remember those things, because I certainly, maybe they were inspired watching me do presentations for Craig a long time ago, where I, I couldn't even remember <laughs> what row I was on on one page versus another, and my poor partners thought, well, let's make this easier for this poor guy. But notice that they have designed this, they being uh, our consultants, to use grouping so that you can serve the real estate on your report. These are There's a lot of best practices that we can teach you, uh, having worked with so many people for so many years. But notice, look, there's more. So now not only am I seeing the GL transactions, but if you wanted to investigate these more, I could say, well, it's this batch right here that's the problem. And you come into this. You know, and it's drilling into another, you know, actually it's changing the parameters for this one. But there are other <clears throat> capabilities. If I was looking at an invoice, I could drill into the invoice and they chose to show it. This is just a, like, think of this as a dashboard. It's or a form. So they built a form, made it look like a check, and they would have been passing parameters. So you do a lot of fun things with your reports in Excel. That's all this is. It looks like a check or whatever. It's not. It's just <clears throat> how the person built their report. You can just do a lot with it. So, so, so the point is that there. Is, I want to show you that uh, report because it's useful, and I want to show you drill down capability. Um, so we had a lot of these reports on here. Now you'll see financial reports, but the limitation of these financials, if you if you know General Ledger, you probably already know what I'm about to say is that there are accumulated totals. And if you have different prefixes, your prefixes could potentially be in different current periods, even if you have the same year end. And Sage is flexible enough that different prefixes could have different year ends. So if you ever wanted to do consolidated financials with different prefixes, you've got some challenges. That's one thing. What if, you, what if it was December, or let's say what if it was January or February? And you wanted to do a financial for January and February, but you haven't closed your year. What would you do? You know, so now to try to do that with Office Center Query would be enormously challenging. So we invented new technology uh, that makes financial reporting that Sage is capable of doing very powerful. And that's Office Center Financials, and I'll show that in a moment. But I want to show something like this, you know, like this cash flow analysis. So as we when we first started building this technology, there were no reports on the launch pad because we didn't really know how people would use this technology. Um, and Craig knows that we, we, my, my partner and I thought maybe we potentially 10 or 12 companies over, you know, by, by over the next five years after we released it might buy this, you know, because we thought people would use it just for these enormously complicated Excel-based reports. We had no idea what we created. And we sold like 200 at the first conference, so we were flabbergasted. But um, we didn't put any reports on a launch pad because we didn't know how people would use it. As we've learned how people use Excel-based reporting, then we'll put reports to showcase techniques that we see that are innovative, that, show, that, that leverage Excel-based reporting, giving you uh, capability you wouldn't otherwise have. And these are all simple workbooks. Even this one, this cash flow is simple. It, it, it may not look simple because it's got a, a chart and things like that, but the things I've seen people create where I know companies that run their entire business off of six workbooks. They have a lot of different reports and they're all interconnected. And they've got their processes dialed in and I'm in awe. You know, it's just, it's left to your imagination. Um, but here, let's say I want to run this as of a specific date. 
So I say I want to run this as a 531 2015. You know, so I put that in here. So I've got sample data. I click here to refresh. Pick my folder. So what it's going to do is it's going to summarize the data, but then it's immediately charting this data. You can do this. This is a, when we say visual elements on reports. There's a visual element, and you can tie a, a chart to any data. So build your report and then start improving it because visual elements will increase how readable and understandable your reports are. And Excel is made to do this, so do it. But we've also pulled data from a variety of different sources, summarizing it here, and and you have the capability then of drilling down. So if you think of this as cash flow, this is in and out, you know, cash. So if I want to know the cash flow for this, and don't blame me for the performance of this company, but once they start using Office Connector, notice how things have turned around. That's my little interpretation. All right. Everybody's muted. Hopefully some people ask. But I could uh, I could just double click that and it's drilling into the detail and it would show me what's in there. And in your data, there's going to be a lot more you know, information and it'll run a lot faster uh, or, or be a lot more powerful. Um, as far as speed, uh, there are, I don't know if folks who are using Office Connector have any questions in regards to speed, but I want to show you something that I think is really important to kind of see whether you're new or um, already experienced, um, which is different ways you can use technology that can make a report be much, much faster one way versus another. But it, I just first wanted to show you this useful report here. Uh, on there. Um, relative to what I just said, <clears throat> I'm going to use an example, a work in progress, because it's a good example because it, <laughs> after people buy it and then they start to, use, one of the first things is they'll come in this work in progress report. And th if I open this one, they'll, they'll come in here and it's useful. I come in here and I hit refresh, right, add-ins, and I hit refresh right there and off I go. Um, and I've got this data, but they'll say, well, it's not based on a cutoff date. So now I could just convince you not to use a cutoff date. That could be easy. <laughs> but you want what you want. That's the whole purpose of this technology. So if you already kind of understand that there is a sum function on here, it's not hard to imagine you could put a from and a through date, and these columns could be tied to summing up transactional detail off of whatever table that you, know, you need to pull you know, for a range of dates. Aging, aging, that's how easy agents are. You can put a from and a through in a column and tie your sum function to those dates. And when those dates change, the formulas change. It's all it's like magic. However, it would kind of be slow. Because think about it. If there's all these sum functions everywhere, um, now this sum, these sum functions are not pulling off of uh, transactional detail. These are summing columns. So that's very fast. The, the, and that's also an Excel sum function. This sum function is reaching out into a table that could be enormous. Now, I don't know how everybody maintains their, their um, databases, but I was a consultant <laughs> for a lot of years, and my customers did not always follow my advice about when to archive and put things into history. I know that all of your customers uh, over here are, have the best practices, you know, so we would not see that. But, you know, if the folder or the transactions are, if there's an enormous number of them uh, or not, you know, just a lot of sum functions, a uh, work in progress report even could take considerable time to refresh. And people, as they get used to this technology, they don't, they like it being fast, snappy, faster than crystal, faster than something else. So there's a different approach. And I'm going to show it to you, not, if you don't know Office Connector and, and and whatever the formulas and all that are kind of scary to you, then kind of put what I'm about to show you in uh, in context. That there's a way that either we can build a report or your consultants can help you make it go faster. But I want to f uh, show you this. Let's see where I have this little guy stored here. I should have it on here. Oh, let's see. Well, look at that. I put it right here on my desktop. That's awesome. Uh, so. I had my partner, who's much smarter than me, create this uh, so, I, so I could showcase. So in this case, you know, it's, I've got a list of jobs. It's really the same report as before, simpler, because I just have cost right now. But I have a from and a through date, and I want to pull the detail out. Now, instead of having some functions 
I'm using a lookup function, a, an Office Connector lookup function. So I want you to imagine this, that right now if, if you think of your tables in Sage, you have a transaction table, and there's millions of transactions in there. Let's say that Sage created a new table for your reporting. Okay, they, Sage thought, oh, well, we're just going to do this. You can use it for report design or whatever. Assume they may created a new table. They didn't, okay, so don't go look in there. But they created a new table, and it, it, the rows were jobs, but the columns were whatever date range you happen to want to run your report. So now you have a table. It's got rows and columns. That's what, how lookup works, right? If you identify what row you want, you tell it what column you want to return, and it pulls it in. That's how this is working. It's looking up information off of a table that actually doesn't exist, but, but it does. Now I'm going to show you, this is magic, okay? You think if you, there is magic, there are wizards, and we have them at, at Event One Software, then they use programming language. This is a paid commercial by my developers who want everybody to think programmers are awesome, but anyway, <laughs> I'm a programmer, but uh, they aren't that awesome. This is no. This is just uh, to demystify this. This is just the language of databases, and if you learn it, it's easy. Select means what columns do I want? From is what table? Where is your conditions? Grouping is how you want it organized, right? So there you go. Now some of the other stuff may be kind of terrifying, but he's explaining right here, you know, why we're doing it this way. But this this language here creates what's called a virtual table or a query. It's actually in SQL, it's, this is a query, right? Or a view. Think of it as a view of information. And what happens is, when this workbook is running, that table then exists and I can pull data off of it. So if I had this, like, um, 5-1-2015 through, uh, see how it changed? Because this, he had it for old sample data, but anyway. It's pulling the data, and look how fast, and it will be fast. So the point is that there are ways to make reports fast, and you can learn it. We can train you. We can, uh, United Solutions could host training, and we could provide an instructor. We could, you know, there's a lot of ways to do this uh, to help you elevate your skills with this technology. So there's a bunch of reports here. Now, the writing, I wanna, I'm just going to show you one thing having to do with the writing. I'm going to actually use GL budget. But the concept of writing into the database is really simple. And that is, you can present your data in Excel and then find information you want to change in, in Sage. Maybe insurance expirations. Maybe it's your GL account on your categories you want to change. Uh, or in payroll, you know, information is on all these different tables and you want to make it very efficient to update your rates or union tables or whatever. Excel is great at laying information out off of any number of tables. So if you could just change the data on the table, wouldn't it be better if you just click a button and it changes it in Sage without you having to go in and type it? That's what Write does. Think of it as maintaining your tables, like employees, if you have the rights to that, or jobs, or categories, or commitments, you know, things like that. There is a table for general ledger budgeting that's important. A lot of people do budgeting Excel. So I did a presentation for Sage in December to show people how Office Manager could help in, in year-end time, but or any time for budgeting. So with this, this is built from a template that's on the launch pad. It's, it's the right GL budget template. This uses Office Connector Write. Um, so it, you know, here I'm pulling my budgets, or excuse me, my accounts, and I could put in my budgets for whatever year and the budget type. That's how budgets work. Now, once I put them in here and I get them the way I want. Under add-ins, I can click this button right here, and it will send the data into Sage if I have a right standard license. Okay, so a right standard license, I recommend everyone get one of those. There's so many things you can do to streamline processes. Now, what have I done here? What I've done is shown you some of the things I've seen people do. They, they're already doing their budgeting in Excel, so people could just put formulas here and do math to get what they want the budget to be. Take the budget from before, change it, mess with it, and then put it in here for 2017. Another way I've seen people do it is they'll they'll have like a worksheet, and it could be in this workbook or another one. Remember, Excel can pull from any table in any workbook, any sheet. So here I've got ranges of dates and various different ways to get at these numbers 
these are the numbers I want to put into that account. Later on in the year, I might want to do a revision, and there could be a lot more rows. But these, this, these rows right here, this, this cell has a defined name, to January. So no matter what row it's on, it's always called January income. Well, guess what? I can just come here to income, and that's what its name would be. Ah, I've got this situation sometimes where my Excel gets goofy. But right there, uh, that formula here, it would say January income, and that's how it's tied. Um, and then in the, um, the summing, a lot, the, this is the most common way I've seen people do this, tying one sheet to another, is they use Excel's, um, uh, there we go, come here. Is it, this is it, yep. Oh, I didn't know what I was looking at. Uh, the sum if capability. What, the way that Excel sum if works, it's, a, it's an Excel function. It says sums, sums up a uh, column if some condition. So basically sum this column up if you know, the count number on the budget sheet is this account number. You know, sum this column up for another row if the count number is this number. So you can tie this sheet to that other sheet and it will immediately grab the correct data using the sum of function. Anyway, don't, this is recorded. The, I've got a nice presentation of this and showing you all of it and I, we can get you a link to this. Once you get it all dialed in, you click that button and boom, it writes it back into Sage. You do not have to type it in. So I will point out that, that there are, this is the one table in Sage that you can both write to and um, uh, uh, import. And I recommend using Office Center Write to update your budget, not Office Center Import. You know, only get that if uh, Office Center Import for budgets if you don't want to do any writing. So I have my Excel locked up for some reason. That would be disadvantageous because I have a couple more things I want to show. Uh, ah, okay, good, good, good. Well, hopefully I'm going to get some action. Um, I want to show quickly the financials. Uh, we we can get you a presentation off of Center Financials. It will go over. Uh, we, there's a PowerPoint we have that will show you an example of every single one of these reports. And the beauty is that I can pull. Uh, financials for future periods or past periods. So there's one uh, part of that uh, PowerPoint. Uh, where is that? Uh, well, I, I know I did this. Well, here. <clears throat> we did a really great presentation for the user group here. Um, it, this table is really useful because it showcases what financials is, is in Sage can do and what Office can for financials can do. So you're thinking, you know, I have Office Central Query, and I'm thinking about adding Office Central Financials. It's a site license. It's like $800 plus Sage Care. I don't know, 900 whatever it is. The, um, the, your salesperson can quote that. But it's a fixed price, <clears throat> one time. It extends all your Office Center Query capability, and you get all of this capability. Rolling forward six months or going back, you know, more than 25 periods. So there is a table in Sage that can accumulate detail for like 10 years back. And it's out there and, and it's, it's got the data in it. Well, the financials in Sage that you get off the box, out of the box, they can't read that table. Um, but Office of Financials can. So you can pull financials for any of those periods back, just roll back. You can run your financials as of a calendar month. So if you have your different entities in your company that are, some are like year-end uh, calendar and some are October year-end or whatever. If you wanted to run a consolidated report, normally you couldn't because how do you get it for period five is different for each one. This technology, you could run it for calendar month five and it will do all the math to figure out what that means. <clears throat> so there's just a lot of capability. Um, I'll show you that it, it, this PowerPoint is useful. It's got a lot of content. It's got screenshots of the different reports for financials. And I'm not, so I'm not going to show that. Plus, you can get an evaluation and run it for yourself. What I want to show you real quick is that um, in the financial presentation that I'm going to encourage you to, I'm not going to do it because it's recorded. You can just watch it. But what I'll do in that presentation is I'll show you, you know, th this data could just be typed in. You know, base accounts, it could be a query, whatever. 
And these are the kinds of things we can pull out of SAGE. So balance, period activity, you know, your, any of these things could be in any, any cell. So every cell in your financial can, it can be passed parameters, prefixes, a range of prefixes, a group of them, like prefix groups. It can be passed a year, a, a counting date to get the year, you know, the period or calendar month. And it can return, and you can even pass the data folder. This can do multiple, across multiple folders. You can do consolidated financials with this. So that is a very useful uh, capability, and you have a recorded presentation on that. So I just wanted to hit those so we had time for any, like, one minute of q and I'll stop talking now. Craig, you usually shut me down 10 minutes ago. I turned on my Craig beeper. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I sent you a message. No, we're good. You did a great job. Uh, there is one common question in the queue. Uh, that I thought maybe you could speak to, and that is uh, currently today, do you have access to information out of service management, and do you see that changing in the future? That's a great question. I'm going to extend it just a little bit. There are there are Sage 300 CRE construction real estate products that um, do not use the ODBC driver that many, most of the other uh, tables use. So there's a that o, the main one is uh, ODBC driver maintained by something called Simba Technologies. These other programs, service management, purchasing and inventory, they use other uh, pervasive driver, you know, a different one. So Office mm -hmm. Connector cannot read those. Now, what so you know that's fine and dandy, but what could you do? Well, there's something coming that you're really gonna love. Uh, everyone here is going to love it. It's going to revolutionize Sage 300. It's going to be fantastic. And that is the there's an, an enhancement to the SQL gateway where the, the your your pervasive tables, including PO, IV, and SM, is my understanding, will get replicated into Microsoft SQL Server, all of them in one database. So mm -hmm. now, right now, we have technology that could read that. We do. We're playing with it. It's called it's called Liberty Report. It can read all of that. However, we're talking with Sage about extending, you know, adding additional capability to Office Connector to also just read the SQL table. So at that point, you could use uh, um, technology to pull uh, data from any of the tables, including Service Management, PO, and IV. Not today, though. Today, you would have to use Liberty Reports. Yes. Very good. Thank you. Uh, we are at the top of the hour, and uh, we know that your time is very valuable, so we appreciate uh, all of your attendance. Um, and so what we will do uh, at this